Hi everyone, this is Matthew Tingblad. I'm a communicator with Josh McDowell Ministry, and I want to talk about how we understand God's goodness during this time of global crisis. This virus has done serious damage to the fabric of societies around the world. Some of us are battling unemployment, anxiety, boredom, loneliness, or the virus itself. And for many, the situation goes even deeper. We are battling with the question of whether God is still good during this difficult time. There's the philosophical argument of suffering against the goodness of God. We've all heard it, right? If God is good and powerful and knows everything, why doesn't he just remove suffering every time? But there's also the emotional realness we are experiencing in this question right now. And so it's not just an intellectual thing anymore. It's a felt thing. And for many of us, it's like we're seeing this in color for the first time. How can God really be good, we ask, when there is so much hurt? For those of us struggling in this regard, we would do well to consider what are the things which we have allowed to influence our belief about God's goodness? For many of us, our theology of God is based entirely upon our own experience of life. If things go well, we are inclined to think God is good. But if things don't go well, well, we think God is not good. And so God's goodness is reduced down to what I experience as good. Maybe that's my job or my money or my health or my emotional wellness. We're fine believing the goodness of God when we have these things, but when these things are taken away from us, well, our faith goes away with it. And we start to question the goodness of God. God's goodness influences our world, certainly. And I highly suspect his goodness has stopped many, many horrible things from happening. Things we would never know about because they never happened. But God does not promise us a pleasant life, nor does he promise that our experience of life is going to get better. These are false expectations we have put on God, thinking that God owes us a pleasant life when he really doesn't. And then we get mad at God for failing to keep a promise he never made. Rather than measuring the goodness of God against the troubles of this world, the Bible calls us to see God's goodness as the answer to the troubles of this world. The reason is because God's goodness is on a different level. His goodness transcends our present circumstances and points to the things eternal, the things unseen. As Jesus says in John 16, 33, here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. In Romans 8, Paul spends a great deal of time writing on the blessings of God. We might expect a blessing to mean that our lives will be comfortable and work according to our plan. But this is not what Paul means at all. Look at verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? He goes on to quote Psalm 44, affirming that hardships will indeed come. So this is assumed. But then he says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Notice that these trials are the exact circumstances by which we find victory. Today, we struggle against the deadly coronavirus. It can't be overcome by God's good love for us. In fact, the Bible promises that our eternal security in Christ will make us victorious through this virus, even if it takes our homes, even if it takes our jobs, even if it takes our lives. We can say this because of God's goodness, not in spite of it. The fact that our world suffers only goes to show how much greater God's plan of redemption must be that he would allow bad things like COVID-19 to take place. For it says in Romans 8:18, 8, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed in us. God's goodness is magnified in these times. It is not diminished. 